Hello everyone, welcome to another session for Aussie Live 2015. In this session we will be hearing from Raymond Pun um, about his, his session's title Collaborating with the Career Centre to Prepare Future Graduates to be Global Citizens. Now, um, some information about Ray. He is currently working uh, in Shanghai, I believe, and he is working for the New York University in Shanghai uh, as a reference and research services librarian. He has expertise in data and digital services support and he is currently working in outreach services as well. Uh, first, to get started, I'd like to thank particularly the Learning Revolution and Steve Hardigan. Uh, we would like to thank Steve for supporting the Australia E-Series in bringing you Aussie Live. The Australia E-Series is a group of volunteers um, from across Australia who bring um, PG sessions to Australians throughout the week, particularly on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and we do that with the assistance of the Learning Revolution Project and Blackboard Collaborate. So thank you very much to those sponsors. Before we get started, if you're able to pick up a little icon and drag it to your part of the world, so I'm putting my little world where I am right now, which is in, currently in Queensland, but I'm, up, I'm sort of living between two states at the moment, so I've tried to put it on the border of New South Wales and Queensland. You can see Ray in Shanghai, and we've got someone uh, in America, which is fantastic. And we've got North East Victoria, lovely. Okay, so I'll move on to the next slide, which brings us to Ray. So Ray, thank you very much for presenting today. It's all yours. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. And I am very excited to be uh, presenting on this topic that is uh, has a lot of value in the university, but also for anyone who, who's interested in understanding more of what a global citizen is and how do we prepare for global citizens through numerous resources that we have. And so, as mentioned, I work at New York University of Shanghai, and what we do is we do a lot of uh, collaborative support with different universities, uh, not universities, but different departments within the university. And so uh, within the support, we'll be looking at four programs that address the skills and the tools needed to build to prepare students to be global citizens, uh, including financial literacy, GIS, which stands for Geographic Information Systems, which is like a computational mapping tool like Google Maps, and other digital information research. And then things you want you might want to ask is uh, questions to ask when building these collaborations. How do you get started? How do you uh, define the support? And uh, then we'll have a question and answer. If you have any uh, questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, basically, it's just a, a brief presentation looking at these programs to give you ideas, to inspire you, and hopefully to give you a better sense of how different kind of universities are implementing these services, programs to prepare students to be global citizens. So the question is, what's a global citizen? So Ron Israel, co-founder and board member of the Global Citizens Initiative, uh, explains that a global citizen is someone who identifies with being part of an emerging world community and worst actions contribute to building this community values and practices. Uh, so it also goes on to say there's a, such a thing as an emerging world community to which people can identify and that such a community has a nascent set of uh, values and practices. That's pretty broad uh, term, term of how he defines global citizen, but it gets interesting because he goes on to say that um, there is an urgent need for a cadre of citizen leaders to be active in the world community. So different kinds of activisms, and this is a list that he mentions in the site. So advocating um, for policy and change and solutions to address global problems, 
uh, decision making, adopting and promoting change in behavior to help protect the environment and support human, humanitarian, humanitarian uh, relief efforts, and organizing events that celebrate diversity in all kinds of arts and cultures. So these are not necessarily the uh, rubric that we're using, but it just gives you an idea of how I think global citizen uh, can be defined in a broad term uh, and how preparing students to uh, fulfill these kinds of expectations or roles might be one way to prepare them to be global citizens. So at NYU Shanghai, we work closely, especially the library, for me, work closely with the Career Development Center. So if you have a Career Development Center, you should find a way to partner with them. Basically, there are numerous reasons why we work with them. They attract more people, more students are interested in careers and different kinds of internships and opportunities. And they are also good resources. They have people with great right expertise, interests, and skills in terms of building programs, outreach. They also have the same values as the library, which is to support our students. Plus, they also have funding. Uh, generally, a lot of departments are limited with funding, except the maybe alumni or the career center, because they need to be robust in supporting students and their interest, because there's a long effect, long impact in their uh, careers after they graduate. So they have they can do promotional items like food, gifts, giveaways, and special events. And so at NYU Shanghai, we have about 80 of 300 students declared in business, finance, economics, and marketing majors. So that's big. And they all tend to migrate to the Career Development Center, get support, ask for advice, and meet with the counselors and so forth. And it's a small uh, unit, just like the library. However, what we can do is we can support them in programs that they probably didn't even know we have these resources, and which is why I'm giving this presentation today to give you these examples of the programs that we're doing. So we're building on existing services and resources to be embedded. So there is a way for a librarian to work closely with the Career Center. We work closely in building collections for them. We buy books that reflect their interests, the students' interests. So that happens to be books about entrepreneurship, biographies, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, so forth. Basically, these are um, uh, books that students have asked them that they would like to read or things that will help students build their career interests. And what, what I'm going to talk about today is really facilitating these workshops and collaboratively to uh, use the library resources to teach students business research as well as um, data, GIS, um, career crews, all these kinds of um, databases that we have that's usually for research that can be used for career development. And also a librarian that could serve as a speaker or maybe recommend other professions to be speakers in a program that they can have as an opportunity to build on um, a program. So here's the first workshop that we worked on, researching company profiles, industry news through the library resources. The library has a lot of uh, electronic resources from literature to business research in different kinds of trends. And so what we did was uh, usually the business resources are used for economics, marketing classes, uh, groups that are interested in doing specific case studies, projects on um, developing uh, a strategy, a marketing strategy, things like that. So it's all for educational purposes. However, these same tools, you can use them for career development. For example, uh, we have an array of Harvard Business Review uh, journal online. We show the students, based on this uh, research workshop, how to access Harvard Business Review. Um, and why should, we, why should they access it? Well, because it has a lot of great information on interviews, on um, basically negotiating salary. I mean, these things are a little advanced, but it gives them an idea. But it's also helpful for the counselors to use the resource as references for their own uh, research needs. 
but most importantly, we looked at different kind of industries that's available, and these are really sophisticated databases. Um, uh, if if your library has um, access to them, particularly for the newspapers, it's a great way to promote it because um, current newspapers can tell you the direction of the companies and industries that they're heading. So if you, if you have a lot of students who are interested in working in uh, Google or in Microsoft, what they can do is uh, you know search for it and then develop research knowledge uh, in terms of um, information needs. And that's that's one way to be um, savvy, right? They're researching for the careers, they're researching through ri library resources, and they're developing these research skills that allow them to use um, uh, accredited sources um, for their research to develop skills to be a global citizen. And so this workshop promoted all of these tools that allow them to think differently, not just for research, but for their career interests. And so another workshop we did was um, if you have a, a training website or some sort of tool, so um, there are a lot of them these days that are sort of open access, uh, that includes YouTube or Vimeo. There are a lot of these people throwing in uh, websites, uh, their own uh, videos. So what we did was we worked closely, again, with the Career Development Center to promote a database that we have. It's called lynda.com. And it's uh, free for anyone, uh, not free, but in terms of trial, it's um, people can use, but um, the, li the library does subscribe to it. However, it's a great tool to promote online learning content. So from web design to public speaking to developing a business strategy, you can learn all of that through lynda.com. However, what I'm suggesting is that there are so many of these online learning tools um, not just YouTube, but the MOOCs, anything from Coursera to Udacity to edX, those are, those are all free. And why are they important? Well, you can learn new content, you can learn new skills, things like that. So you can promote them collaboratively with your departments or within, and it's a good way to build relationships because a lot of people don't know about it, and there seems to be a lot of um, tools out there. And what we wanted to emphasize was our own uh, lynda.com site because it's legitimate and it's a uh, very, very uh, if, uh, comprehensive. So uh, it's a good way to continue fostering that uh, relationship um, with the Career Development Center because they, they, had, they didn't really know we had this uh, skill learning database. And it's quite impressive because it's free for all students to attend and uh, take advantage of it while they're students to learn new skills. And every year around November, uh, mid, mid to late November, it's uh, an international event called GIS Day. So GIS is Geographic Information Systems, and it's an uh, international event that celebrates GIS programs, events around the world. So uh, the, the website itself will give you a map of all the institutions pr promoting a program or an event, teaching GIS tools. Uh, such as Google Earth, Google Maps, uh, those are the open access. But then there are more sophisticated ones, such as uh, ArcGIS or um, uh, the, the the ones that are uh, social explorers, the ones that, that can get a little more complicated. Those are database maps. And what happens is that it's important to uh, teach students about the concept of GIS, but also GIS careers. So. What we did at NYU Shanghai is that we worked again with the Career Center and we promoted career, uh, GIS careers and GIS Day. We basically showed them uh, two examples of uh, faculty who are working on um, different kinds of projects, but they utilized GIS tools, GIS research, um, different kinds of map making. And that allowed students to understand, well, what kind of projects GIS involves. And the great thing about the website of GIS Day is that they have videos on different careers in GIS, and then they have resources on GIS, and it's all free. You know, we're talking about promotional flyers as well as websites um, and slides that you can use to promote GIS. And it's a great event um, because it teaches students to think about cartography, mapping, visual literacy, 
these are key skills, especially in today's world, for students to really understand how GIS or um, uh, the world kind of operates through the lens of maps because it's a way to tell different kinds of narratives, it's a way to get opportunities and careers, and it's a way to learn new skills to think differently. So I encourage people to check out um, GIS Day. Um, I believe you can Google it um, to get the website, but we uh, promoted uh, the event in, around November because that happens every year. Here's another uh, program that we collaborated on. It's called um, Debt Free. It's the way to be. It's actually a financial literacy program. And I know if you look at, look at the schedule, it's only for one hour, 12.30 to 1.30. So there's probably a problem with that because in one hour, you can't necessarily learn to be a budgeting expert. You can't necessarily learn to be, um, you know, financial literate in one hour. But what we did was we planted the seed for students who are studying abroad in Shanghai on the need to budget, the need to save. Just because you're studying abroad doesn't mean that things are cheap, things are affordable. Things are actually quite expensive in Shanghai and people might not know just because there's a currency difference between where they're coming from, whether they're from the United States or from Australia or from Europe to China. So it's a good opportunity to teach students the basics of saving. So what we did was we brought in a few people who are economists and then have them talk about budgeting uh, in terms of creating a plan, a strategy, and also just showing them that, you know, they should be very conscious of how they spend their money and um, think about scholarships as well as other kind of, uh, of financial opportunities in the future because um, it's important that they develop good habits early on because they're all freshmen and sophomore. We don't have anyone over that yet. But as they develop these skills, they learn to be better suited. Um, they wouldn't be um, more in depth. And uh, I think it's important to be financial literate because in this time of day, it's just so hard for people to save because there's just so many things out there. There's the iPhone 6, new iPads, new this, new that. So they might feel um, pressured to buy things, which we're trying to tell them, you know, to be a little savvy with their money because if they're limited and they're living abroad, it could be really hard later on. So um, building a financial literacy program is kind of hard, but it's definitely important. And uh, you might want to collaborate with uh, financial um, admissions, payroll, anybody who has that background because they can really talk about savings and in a way that might make sense to students. And for us, we collaborated to uh, promote this event uh, in a way that's just very basic. So as I had mentioned, uh, people think Shanghai is um, a party hub, but it's rather expensive. And uh, you know, we're teaching them how to conduct research before buying anything. So there are websites out there, Consumer Reports, YouTube. I mean, of course, it's really hard to um, validate whether these are authentic reports. However, it's the idea of doing research before buying anything. Uh, how do they cope with the different currencies and exchange rates? That's a good question. Um, well, there's, there are apps for it on their phones, and they can just see. But we usually tell them to be savvy, you know, to exchange it, not in the airport, but in the bank or somewhere else because airports will rip you off, things like that. So to do a little more research. Um, and it's a little tricky to discuss scholarships and financial aid because we have different students from all around the world. But for them to be mindful that there are appropriate scholarships for depending on your uh, student status. And we offered advice on general spending tips from working adults. Uh, everybody, a few of us, three of us gave a, our own ideas on how we spend. And we wanted, we overall want students to develop healthy habits, and this is a good start. And working with the Career Center allowed us to really plant those ideas for students to be savvy about their money. And also, uh, it's a way to promote them to be global citizens, right? People who are uh, not spender, not great spenders, or people who are uh, very um, careful about how they uh, utilize their resources. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Smart Coin is a good app as well. 
So this is the questions to ask in terms of building collaboration. And there are numerous ways you, you want to build, but it takes time to build and collaborate. Um, sometimes you might have to do a trial and error experiment, meaning uh, you might want to do um, programs that are big or small. Um, you might want to scale it and see how, how you want to do it. But the main issue, I think, is when you're collaborating, you have different people with different ideas, different perspectives, and uh, that might require different decisions being made. And you might want to ask yourself if it aligns with your goals, strategies, or visions, or with your university, schools, or libraries. Um, does it match what they want and what you want and all these decisions? These are just questions you want to ask. And also, more importantly, uh, partnerships can fall. And if they do, do you have a backup? And is there a way to make the partnership sustainable? Um, it's very important to create something that is long term. Short term, maybe as an experiment, but long term for a long purpose that can really support students throughout the whole uh, years that they're in your university or schools. And you want to ask yourself if you have resources or budget to allocate for these programs. Of course, if you're collaborating, uh, everyone can give half and half. But if you're not collaborating and if you're working on this your own, you want to ask yourself if your department has resources or a budget for you to support these programs, whether you have student workers who can make flyers for you, or you have money for food, refreshment, or for bookmarks, things to give away to promote the program. And time, too. So it's important that you have support or you have these kinds of resources. Otherwise, it makes it very, very hard to create these programs. So um, that's pretty much all I have for now. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, you can feel free to email me or tweet me. Otherwise, I'd be happy to answer questions. OK, so here's a question. Do you have any specific strategies you use to persuade and convince students that this kind of research is really important throughout their lives? That's a good question. Um, thank you, Peggy. What we do is, as I said, we collaborate with the Career Center. So we tell them in the workshops. And I think it makes sense to them in the workshop, because we have a survey at the end. And then we read the survey, and a lot of them say, oh, I thought the libraries was just about books. I didn't know it had these kinds of resources for career research. And you know, we tell them in the library, but it doesn't, it's not as effective because they come in just for something else, like for a paper that they need for their class. But they don't think about research goals or you know, lifelong learning research tools or skills. So when we collaborate with the Career Center, or something that makes sense for them, something that's more meaningful for them in, in that way, we tell them that research is important. You know, you should research the products before you buy it. You, you should research different types of uh, you know, careers. You should research different types of industries. So I think it's getting to them to understand that research is important. Um, and that's one way. We can't force the students to attend these workshops, but who, those who do, they do learn something from these workshops that they didn't before. What about after they leave school? Do they continue to see the importance of research in their lives? Um, I can't speak for the students right now because they're still um, students. But I can tell you that, for the most part, um, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, I, th I think later they'll, they'll, they'll find out that, it's, that research is important. Um, usually, they, they'll find out that research is important after they leave because they don't have access to Harvard Business Review, to lynda.com. They don't have access to any of the resources that the library provides after they graduate. Um, so we try to emphasize that as they, um, they are still in the program, in the university, to do those research. Um, yeah, that's a good question. We probably will survey them uh, through, with the Career Center after five years, um, or a couple of years after they graduate, to see how things changed. Thanks for the question. Anybody else? There are a couple of people typing, so we'll see what comes up.
Oh, sure. I hope it was helpful. Feel free to email me. Hey, were there any further questions there for I Just pop them in the chat. Lots of thank you. So, um, Ray, it was fantastic, really interesting. And it's great to see that uh, a university is really taking the time and effort to value the idea of um, you know, what happens after and <laughs> to give them skills. It's really, really important, I think. And I think that as a, as a graduate from a university, I think most of us, um, sometimes you sort of finish and you have the bit of paper that says, good on you, you got your degree, but what do I do now? And having that support, I think, is a great way um, that um, NYU has set up this program. It's a really great idea. That's right. And most importantly, we're, we're really wanting them to build the skills to be a global citizen. And uh, that's really the whole point, to make them be savvy about everything and uh, using teaching them the right research skills, the tools that's available for them to build their characters uh, as global citizens, um, and then going back to the sort of features of a global citizen, um, you know, being a, an advocate for the arts, for the environment, and social justice, things like that. So um, as they become more savvy throughout their course, um, hopefully it turns out that they become global leaders and so forth. Excellent. Peggy's got another question for you. How do you connect your workshops with global citizenship? Well, it's generally, um, uh, that's a good question. It's generally based on uh, our partnership with the Career Center. So, for instance, the financial literacy part is that we want them to develop healthy habits. Um, and so uh, from there, it's sort of like, well, global citizenship is, is you know, someone who has these kinds of skills, um, in term, not just financial literacy, but um, GIS skills, research skills, or general understandings of um, information available and how they can use information efficiently and, and effectively. And so, yeah, developing skills that are transferable, that's exactly it. And these skills are also reflective as global citizens um, because our university is part of a global network university. So that means that third year, all the students will need to study in New York or Abu Dhabi in the Middle East, or these are our campuses. And they get the opportunity, or even Sydney. They, they, they'll be going, some of them will be going to Sydney. And so they have to be uh, developing these skills consistently um, because they're going to be global citizens. Um, yeah, Excellent. those are great experiences right. for the students. They are, certainly. I remember when I, I was at Unilever, we have a lot of Americans that came to our university and it was a real experience for them. So I think it, it's great that, that lots of universities are taking that idea up and, and offering those uh, opportunities to their students. Okay, well, thank you very much, Ray. I think we've exhausted all the questions. Um, I'd like to thank you, Ray, for your presentation. Fantastic. You obviously have a bit of a passion for this. Um, you could hear that just in your voice the way you were talking about it. So thank you very much. Um, anyone that would like to save the, the whiteboard, if you go to File, Save and Whiteboard, you will be given an option to save um, what you've seen here today. Just make sure you save it as a PDF format, change the file type because otherwise it will save it automatically in the Collaborate session. Um, so uh, you won't be able to see it again, so make sure you choose PDF. So thank you very much, Ray. I'll, I'll end the recording now. Thank you.